On Monday, I went to Sony Hall and I got introduced to Bradley Jaden, who is a musical theater British heartthrob <laughs> um, with tons of charisma and a voice that is spectacular. He has been Raoul in the Italy version of Phantom of the Opera. He is about to be Javert in the international tour of Les Miserables. He was in EastEnders, and he has been in Wicked, Shrek, and countless other musicals in London. Oh, Sondheim's Old Friends. I am so thrilled that Bradley Jaden decided to come and visit us. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, I'm so thrilled. How long have you been doing this? Like, how did you, I, I I'm like, I'm like fangirling and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Um, how long have you been doing this in London? Because I did not know who you were and I'm now so thrilled that I did now know. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I went to drama school at the age of 18 uh, and I w didn't really sing much prior to that. My sister was a classically trained singer so I believe that I kind of subconsciously learned from her. Um, but it was um, actually Sir Cameron McIntosh that I met at an open audition for Miss Saigon when I was 18. And he advised me to go to drama school. And, um, and I guess my career kind of just started from there. So I went to Guildford School of Acting, uh, did three years to get my degree, and then kind of was let out into the world. And uh, yeah, I can't believe that just this Monday I was here performing at Sony Hall, which was just a dream come true. Now, how did that come about? Because seriously, it was spectacular. I was awed. <laughs> well, it was um, it was a, a huge undertaking from uh, the producers Simon and Scott at Cisco. Um, I was originally asked just to do a one-off uh, concert in Italy because, as you mentioned, I was playing the role of uh, Raoul in Phantom, and they were the first uh, theatre actually to ever approach me and ask me to do a, a show. And then um, it was selling quite well. So uh, the boys, uh, Simon and Scott, they, they said, why have you never done London? And I guess I just was like, oh, I don't think anyone's going to buy a ticket. You know, you know I've, just, I've just been used to just doing uh, shows. Um, but we sold Wait, out. Wait, I have to stop? No. Because you sold out. Not <laughs> one, but two. <laughs> yes, we did. We sold out two shows um, in about 12 hours. So <gasps> yeah, wow. yeah, so um, we're, we're doing that next week in London for us. And then they said, Let's, let's, let's go big and let's go to New York and I you know, grabbed, grabbed the chance with both hands and we're here and I was able to sing with one of my really good friends, Shoshana Dean and it was just an absolute bucket list. It was a really, uh, I, I'll cherish that moment for a long time. I have to admit that was one of the most spectacular moments of the show even though what you did, I loved your first number. The Shrek number was phenomenal. Thank you. And you look at you and you go, Shrek, yeah, right. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, Shrek was a, a huge part to my career. I, I actually uh, was the understudy to that role. Um, and uh, a lot of people don't know, but I, was, I, I lost a lot of weight playing that role. I was, uh, oh. I, I, I guess I, you would say I lost about 50 kilograms or 120 pounds while I was doing that show. And yeah, so that. Wait, you lost 120 pounds? Mm. Where was it? It, it was a, a lot of places. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah, and the, um, the, the uh, writer of the show, Janine Tesori, actually advised me. She said, I think you'd be more successful if you lost, lost some weight. And, and uh, she was right, and I grabbed that opportunity and was just like, okay, let's, let's go. I, wanna, I was hungry to work, and, um, and I was hungry to perform elsewhere, and, and then my career kind of evolved. And yeah, it's, I've been very, very, very fortunate. At the time, I was uh, 24, and um, and you know we in this in, in in the industry, image is important, and you know we we I know that we are we always want to be healthy and happy, and I I wasn't really. I was kind of just more focused on the singing, and and you you almost need to be a bit of a package, and I'm so glad I did that because my health improved. You know, uh, I had asthma, and that was you know subsided a lot. So you know, I had a lot of huge benefits from it. And then a lot more work opportunities came, and um, and I'm very very grateful for, for to Janine for even kind of approaching me and kind of saying that she saw something in me. So yeah, it was it was a, that show in particular I owe a lot to. Being a, a, a singer is uh, a, being a, an athlete. You know, we're doing eight shows a week, and and you want to make sure that you're able to do that. And um, you know, and that was it was just an advice, and and I I kind of ran with that because I, I respected her and, and went with that, but. 
you know, it's, uh, I think we, like I say, we are performers in every sense are doing eight shows a week and we've got to be fit mentally and physically and I think, you know, it was going to come off either way. <laughs> no, the funny thing is, is that I was in a I used to be a performer mm -hmm. and I was in a series of accidents and I went from very small to mm. big ah. and people ask me, why am I not doing theater anymore? Mm. And the answer is yes, I am no longer an athlete. I'm not. I, I don't know if I'll ever be. I'm getting back to it, but mm -hmm. not really. And it it takes a lot to do musical theater. It does. It's you know you it's it's a it's a, a huge lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, like I said, we're doing eight shows a week. But then, you know, on top of that, you're you're rehearsing in, in the daytimes. You're you're going to the gym. You're trying to rest. You sleep at different hours to perhaps a, a, a nine to five worker. And but it's um it's a, a lifestyle that I would never change for for anything. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite thing in the world. People call me a vampire because I still have those hours. Um, did you start to give up stuff? Because when I was doing theater, I wouldn't do dairy mm. because it would cost too much phlegm. Oh. I wouldn't do anything that was detrimental. Mm. Uh, I, I can't say that I do. I know, I, I know there's a lot of performers out there that do change. Um, I, I try to just be as calm as I can. You know, I, I don't take uh, many throat sweets or anything like that I just you know it's, it, for me it's I think it's a men mentally um, I, I try to just be as, as calm as I can be and and just sing I, I just love singing so it's it's for me I don't try to worry myself with uh, trying to you know be healthy and stuff like that because I, th I think that sometimes has a worse effect for me personally mm. so I don't take uh, throat sweets or steam or anything like that I just if I'm tired I rest and if I'm good I just keep going forward so that brings me to one of my favorite questions in life. You're a singer. Mm. They say that eyes are the windows of the soul, mm. but I think songs are. Oh. What song or series of songs describes who you are? Oh, um, describes who I am. Well, my, my favorite singer of all time is uh, Maxwell. Um, he's a soul and R&B singer, um, and Luther Vandross. Mm. I grew up listening to them all the time. So I would have to see, uh, maybe there's a, a great Kate Bush cover of this mm. woman's work that Maxwell sings, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, and then because of musical theater, I would have to say any classic sung by Josh Groban, because he is one of my biggest influences. So yeah. <laughs> what shows haven't you done? that you would like to take on? Oh my goodness, that's a... Uh, I, I actually mentioned this in, in the show that uh, you know I was very lucky to be in the ensemble of Lamers and that was my dream come true. Um, and that's, I stick with that, you know, it's, uh, I think anything else that I've done after that has been a huge bonus and I feel very, very fortunate. Um, and I, it, for me, it's, I just want to be in the business. You know, I want to work, um, I want to continue singing and performing as long as I can because it's, it's part of me and it's who, I'm, who who I am. So for me, it's not about you know being a lead in this or being you know. It's more working with great people that love the industry and keep the industry alive. That for me, that's more important. So, are there composers that you would like to work with in either musicals or in doing a solo album? Oh, um, I mean, I've been very fortunate, you know, to sing some some great musicals, uh, but I think maybe Jason Robert Brown would be, I think, you know, I, 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 was, you know, I sang one of his songs in my show and, and, you know, he's a genius, so I think that would be very exciting to be part of something like that. I agree with you on a big Jason Robert Brown mm. fan. Did you get a chance to see The Connector? Did it, that come to London yet? No, I, I haven't seen that. I haven't had the chance. I've, I've seen, I have seen some wonderful theatre since I've been out here, you know, I managed to see three shows and, yeah, it's been, been fantastic. What did you see? Uh, on, I went and saw my friend Shoshana in Hell's Kitchen. I love that. Um, then the following night I went and watched the play The Appropriate. Oh, which yeah. Which was wonderful. And then last night I went and watched Illinois. Oh. Yeah, which was fantastic. I mean, the dancers, singers, it was beautiful. I'm really glad to it. That music is fabulous. I hadn't known that music mm. until I saw that show when yeah. I fell in love. Yeah, it was, really, it was a wonderful like 90 minutes of escapism and just just being able to see people express so much emotion just through the medium of dance was great. You mentioned that 
your biggest dream was to be in the ensemble of Les Mis, mm. but you're about to take on Javert. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about how you got that show and where it's going and what it's doing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been very fortunate. I've been part of that. Um, I joined Les Mis in the 29th year in its London run. Um, and I, in my first year, I was understudy to the role of Andras and understudy the role of Jean Valjean. Um, and actually, I never got to play either of those in my first year of, of being it, which was absolutely fine. That's kind of like, you know, you kind of know that's going to happen when you're an understudy. And in the second year, I was, um, for the 30th anniversary, I was off the role of Andras, which was uh, unbelievable. And I also covered Jean Valjean in that year, so I played, played Jean Valjean a couple of times. Wait, did you get to do the 30th anniversary um, special? Yes, that was that was me. I was yeah doing the Andres and that, which was amazing because people like Con Wilkinson came and uh, yeah, it was, it was just uh, a big fangirling moment that <laughs> that time. Um, and oh, then so you have them too. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, I have it all the time. I'm, you know, I'm literally just walking around New, New York at the moment, just kind of stumbling into people and meeting friends and just yeah, it's it's a wonderful place, you know, especially for for theatre of all kinds. And then I, I left Les Mis, um, and then um, I went and played Fierro in Wicked, and then I was offered um, the role of Javert um, at the age of 29, so I was the youngest in the world to, to play the role. Um, and it was, yeah, just the biggest uh, privilege. You know, that show is, is my favorite musical of all time, and, and for Sir Cameron McIntosh to give me that kind of um, opportunity to help uh, show people that musical across London was amazing. You have the perfect voice for this show. No, your voice just resonates with that music. Well, thank you very much. Um, anyway, it's, it's, I think, you know, it's just something that I've grown up with and I've always wanted to be. Maybe my voice is, uh, you know, trained to be that kind of way. But, it, you know, uh, I think it's one of those shows as well, even when you are the ensemble or any role, it's such a, a heavy scene. And you are obviously it's, you're, you're singing the whole way through, so you, the stamina that you do to achieve in that show is uh, is remarkable. And now, as you said, we're about to it's about to embark on the 40th year of Les Mis, which is a huge, huge triumph. Um, and I get to play the role of Javert taking it around Europe, and then it's going to go to um, some incredible places like South Korea and, and oh, Australia yeah. and stuff like that next year, which will you know it's it's, it's incredible that a show can be going for 40 years. You know, if, when you really think about something like that, we see absolutely incredible musicals come and go, and but mm. to especially to to play in one venue in London and and perform to a thousand people every night for 40 years is just extraordinary, isn't it? You know, and and I, I feel very very privileged that I can just be a small part of its history. Yeah. You were in Sondheim for Old Friends, mm. and it's now coming to yeah. New York. Well, it's actually in LA, then it's coming to New York. Absolutely. And yet you chose Javert. Mm. Why? <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, I, I wouldn't say I chose. I chose it. I, uh, I think you know. I, it's, I think um, sometimes old friends was uh, the one of the greatest parts of my career, working with the likes of Bernadette Peters and Les Long. And it just, I, w I was educated and I learned so much every single day. Um, but you know, we were very, very lucky that. Uh, they chose the UK and we got to work with um, a lot of uh, local artists there and, and now it's going to have that opportunity to go to LA and, and Broadway and have local artists there which get to enjoy that work and, and we get to enjoy that, that piece of incredible theatre and it will, I think it will be a huge, huge success here. One of my producers, Craig, who went with me to your concert, mm. saw you in it and said you're the best wolf <laughs> ever. <laughs> I, I can't comment on that, you know, I, I just say thank you, <laughs> but it was, it was a great privilege and, you know, like, like I say, like, for me it was just uh, working with some of the greatest musical theatre performers of all time and oh, it's a moment that I'll never forget. You were in EastEnders, mm. how did you get into that and what has that done for your career? Um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was great, it was, you know, to do some TV work um, in the UK, especially at such a prestigious show as EastEnders, um, I learned so much. And again, I feel I feel like I've my whole career has just been just being educated and taught by such wonderful people that I've looked up to and, and, and admired and been inspired by. And, and you know, TV acting is so different to stage acting, and 
um, mm -hmm. and it has its own challenges and its own um, uh, things that make it what is what it is. And for me, I was you know starting out in, in that TV, and I had a great role, and I got to work with uh, Natalie Cassidy, who who had been in the show for a long, long time, and uh, it was just great to. to it, the, the hardest thing for me was that almost without the audience reaction. You know, you were kind of, and you had to be straight on it, and but it was it was wonderful. And I, you know, if there's an opportunity to work in TV again, it would be it's ideal. Do you know what I mean? But it's um, you know. In our industry, nothing's ever a given, and you just kind of just take those opportunities, seize them, and enjoy them wholeheartedly, and then move on. I can see you doing more film and TV. Um, I was videoing the concert, so I really got to see your face straight up, and the subtle choices you make are so perfect for TV and film, so I really would like to see you do more. I know that you have to fly back to London, so okay. I have to wrap this up, I'm told. I am so thrilled that you are with us. Thank you. I am so thrilled that Bradley Jaden, he is an amazing performer. If you get a chance to catch him, do it because his voice is spectacular. And he's also a really wonderful actor. I'd like to thank Magda Katz for videoing and for always being there for us. I'd like to thank Ramil Gopez and the Hotel Edison for allowing us to be here. I'd like to thank Lisa Goldberg for making this happen. I'd like to thank Craig Horsley for always being here and producing. This is live from the Hotel Edison, Times Square Chronicles presents. Thank you.